Um, Admiral Science presents Adams and its history dealing with SLSPS3 and SOL 6.4. I do apologize about the delay with the camera. All right, so that was my explanation of the atom. I used the blocks, and we show that the atoms are the building blocks of matter. This is where matter starts at, and every atom is different, all right? The atoms that make up your desk is going to be different than the atoms that make up your body, which in turn is going to be different than the atoms of the air that you breathe. Every matter is made up of atoms, and every atom or element is different depending on the structure. All right, it gives us its unique properties, and uh, but every atom that is the same is going to be the same throughout. They're going to have the same number of protons, and we'll get to that on in a later um, segment. But here we have Democritus. He was one of the first ones to coin the term atmos, which in Latin means indivisible. He called these indivisible structures atom, atmos, and he said could not be divided any further than what they were and for the longest this is what we this is a, a, a common belief and even today there are misconceptions that yes atoms cannot be divided while they may be the smallest unit of matter the thought of division is somehow slightly incorrect but he was pretty gosh darn close. And Democritus theory was even supported by this guy, John Dalton. Now the difference between Dalton's idea of the atom and Democritus' theory of the atom was that Dalton had experiments. He researched. He had evidence. And one part of our nature of science is that science demands evidence. And John Dalton was able to gather evidence to support his claim that Yes, there is a very uh, small unit of matter that we cannot see, and we will call it the atom. Dalton is credited with starting the atomic theory, that, that theory that paved the way and gave structure, gave atom its feature. Then, in 1897, uh, J.J. Thompson, he then said, well, although I do believe that we do have atoms, he, he was the one who is credited with finding our first subatomic particle, a particle that the atom can be broken down into. And his subatomic particle was electrons. And with the evidence of research and experiments, um, he was able then to, to determine that electrons are in atoms. And his model showed what many call plum pudding. It represented plum pudding. It, and I often tell uh, my students that it looks like a cookie, almost. Was the atoms basically the negatively charged atoms sitting on top or sitting throughout 
a positive sphere. And so he started to transform. This is our first transformation of the atom. He started to transform this atom into a structure that could be broken down even further. And then in 1911, Ernest Rutherford, uh, he came with the conclusion that, yes, he agreed that there were subatomic particles. He agreed with J.J. Um, Thompson. But he said, hold on there is something further than electrons and he was credited with finding the atom's nucleus and with this nucleus he did an experiment that he's most famous for which is the gold foil experiment where he shot a beam of alpha particles into an atom and some of the particles bounced back very violently and that's why he was able to say that there must be a dense core in the center of an atom and he is fine he is credited with finding the nucleus he even said that the nucleus was positively charged he said that the electrons in fact orbited around the nucleus it did not in fact sit in a positively charged sphere but in fact orbited around the nucleus and this is his theory and I often tell my students that he is the one who who was credited with the Jimmy Neutron uh, symbol uh, when the show Jimmy Neutron used to come on, so he um, his structure is uh, is a common structure that we saw for a, a great while, and and on atom bombs um, back in the the early 1900s, they had these sort of symbols upon them. But his his theory was a little bit flawed because if you have a negative and a positive, we know what happens with, what happens within them. They attract. And when they attract, you would think that the atom would collapse in on itself. But then in 1913, a student of uh, Ernest Rutherford, Niels Bohr, said, well, he is credited with actually finding out what was inside of the nucleus. And because we because we know that electrons um, had very, 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 very minuscule mass, he said that the mass of the atom is contained within this nucleus and it is made up of two subatomic particles, one positive and one that is no charge. And so keeping that nucleus together, uh, we are able to determine that the mass of the atom is primarily inside of this nucleus. And around it, he said that these uh, electrons actually rotate around the nucleus in these fixed orbits and he even said that each orbit each electron um, orbital chain can only hold up to so many electrons so um, he said that the first layer was two the next is eight then 18 but f for basic eighth grade um, physical science, we go 2818, we don't go into the 2P, 2S, 2P, but that's for chemistry, high school chemistry. But for case in point, he said that electrons orbit around a fixed path and that the nucleus contained protons and neutrons. Now, we accepted that theory for a very long time, but then in modern day, we now have Erwin Schrodinger, along with a, a few others, Heinberg and Einstein, um, they came up with this electron cloud model. Still agreeing with Bohr that there were two subatomic particles in the nucleus, protons and neutrons, and agreeing with Rutherford that electrons were there and that the they. Um, did in fact orbit the nucleus, but he said that it, it wasn't. They would say that it wasn't in fixed paths, but more like in a cloud, and that these electrons would f uh, ro orbit the nucleus in a cloud-like formation. And in this picture that you see here, you see it, sh it shows the probable locations of electrons, not knowing where they might be at, but probable locations of electrons, and it shows the atomic nucleus. So here we have our timeline, and we see the transformation of our electrons, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, of our atom. We go with this spherical shape, starting at 430 BCE, and in 1803, we go into 
uh, still going along with this solid spherical shape with John Dalton as he came up with this atomic theory. And then in 1897, we started a, a formation, our first big change to the atom. And in 1897, we found out that there were electrons here. All right, and this is credited with Rutherford. And then in 1911, I'm sorry, this is Thompson. I, I misspoke. Thompson. And in 1911, this is Rutherford's model. And we start now having another change. It is now that we have a nucleus. And with this nucleus, uh, it, we found out that, that it's a positively charged nucleus. And, it's, and ele negatively charged electrons circle this nucleus. And then in 1913 with Niels Bohr, we're able now to say that these electrons orbit in a fixed pair and that protons and neutrons are in this nucleus and this is where our mass of our atom comes from and then present day we have uh, a, uh, a nucleus in the center but then we have to say that the electrons don't orbit in fixed paths but orbit in a cloud formation and it gives us our electron cloud model so we go from spherical shape, spherical shape, uh, spher spherical shape to uh, uh, several spherical shapes around a nucleus. Then we have a nucleus developing with electrons orbiting in a fixed path to our present day cloud model. And it, it, this plays directly into the nature of science because we, for the longest we accepted this. So science was durable. Science was durable. It lasted from 430 BCE, um, 1803, John Dalton confirmed with experiments because we demanded evidence. Science demands evidence. But then, as we know that science is durable, yet subject to change with new evidence. And with uh, Thompson's new evidence, Rutherford's new evidence, Bohr's new evidence, to Schrodinger, Heinberg, and Einstein, their new evidence, we are now able to see a transformation, a change with new, every new evidence. And it's understandable because now, as we said, we were trying to, for, in 1911, we couldn't figure out, well, if it's a positively charged nucleus and you have electrons on the outside, why isn't it collapsing in on itself? Then we understood it's not just protons in the center, but it's actually protons and neutrons. So we were able to understand science. And we said, because it has to make sense. Science has to make sense. And it's a blend of logic, creativity, and these, and these models got really, really creative. And scientists got really, really creative about discovering what they looked like. Look, Ernest Rutherford's gold foil experiment, very creative. So, nature of science played directly into the development of our atom model. Now, with the subatomic particles that were first discovered by J.J. Thompson and then developed over time, um, we know that an atom has a nucleus. And we know that the mass of the atom comes from the nucleus. And there are two particles within, subatomic particles within the nucleus. One of them is protons, which is a positively charged nucleus, um, positively charged particle. And the other is neutrons, which has no charge. And then we know that orbiting the nucleus is electrons, and they are negatively charged. So we have protons and neutrons in our nucleus that makes up our mass of our atom. And then we have electrons that are negatively charged. And here we have our, our graphic. As we can see, protons and neutrons are fairly almost similar in size. Although sometimes you will hear that neutrons are slightly larger than protons. But roughly they're around the same size as compared to electrons, which is very much, much, much smaller than either of the subatomic particles found in the nucleus. So let's recap. Atoms are the building blocks of matter, and we know that with my son's blocks, we were able to see that atoms uh, are the, the, the smallest unit of matter, all right? And um, we were able to distinguish how we went from uh, what we thought was the atom to our present-day model based on evidence, research, uh, creative models, uh, uh, very great experiment of these gentlemen from 430 BCE to present day. Our atom, we became more, we became more understanding of what the atom was. 
Now recap, atoms can be broken into subatomic particles. We know that we have protons and neutrons in our nucleus that make up the mass of the atom. And we know that electrons orbit the nucleus in a cloud and they're negatively charged. See, only the positive people can get in the center and the negative ones have to stay out. Look at it that way.